Hey guys, Will Bates with Humbert here. Today, I'm gonna go through a simple unboxing and a rough install of Mega Live 2. So, just kind of looking at what all we have here with the star of the show, Mega Live 2. Coming over to this box, we have the mounting hardware that's gonna go on your trolling motor. And then coming over here to this box, we have some mounting hardware, the masks that go on the Mega Live 2, an ethernet cable, your power cord, and importantly, but this is your install manual and you'll need to follow this for all the details. All right guys, this is a pretty straightforward process. First step is to make sure you have your power off for your trolling motor and then we're gonna attach the shaft attachment to the troll motor shaft. So in here, I've got three parts. These two parts are gonna clamp onto your shaft. This part is gonna go into where we're mounting on the shaft. And then this is gonna let you rotate your Mega Live around. Over here, we have some zip ties for you to help you route the wires correctly. We have a notice, don't forget this step where we need to make sure we put our lock washer in and fully compress it. For people running Ultrex uh, and not the Quest, we have two rubber pieces that will go right here on your mount to make sure that it doesn't slide up and down your shaft. And then all the other hardware we have right here is included. Everything you need to install Mega Live 2 is included. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this piece right here and you notice it's got a little key and we're gonna attach it right here to where the key fits in. So I have it in there nice and snug. I'm gonna grab one of my lock washers included in the hardware and one of the two short screws I have right here and start screwing that guy in. And we're just gonna button this down until the lock washer's compressed. And now it's fully attached and we're ready to pull in the troll motor. This process is very easy. I mean, you can do it in your garage. I'm at a boat ramp right now. So the next question you have to ask yourself is, which side am I storing my troll motor prop? So I store mine prop out because that's the way my boat cover uh, is set up, is for prop out. We've designed this to be ambidextrous so it can go, you know, prop in or prop out, however which way you want to store it. So with it being prop out like this, I'm going to attach it just like this and I will need an assistant to help me screw these in. I've got these hex screws run through the piece right there. And I'm just gonna mount this a few inches above the bottom so I can unfold it nicely. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get these screws just started into the other piece. And once they're started, I'll just kind of start buttoning them down so when you're buttoning these down and you're getting to the point where they're tight, you wanna make sure you're using the star pattern so you're not over tightening any one of them. So the star pattern will be the top corner, the opposite corner, then jump to the other side and then back to the opposite corner. And you just wanna keep rotating through that until it's nice and snug. So guys, when you're setting the final tightness on these screws, you wanna kinda of take a step back and make sure it's pointed straight with your trolling motor that way when you're pointing your trolling motor at your target, it's pointing exactly at your target. All right, so with the trolling motor bracket installed, I'm gonna now put on the Mega Live 2. So we'll open up the bracket like this, and then the Mega Live 2 is keyed as well. So it, once you get it on there, it'll stay snug. And we have our lock washer on our hex screw again, and I'll just kind of get it started. And now we'll just button it down until we compress the lock washer fully and the Mega Live 2 is snug against the mount. So it's important to consider, there's a lot of different variations of everything people have on their shaft. I have a Mega 360 and I have a Ultrax Quest. And so one thing to think about is I had to move my uh, mount up just ever so slightly so that when I lay my Mega Live into landscape mode, it doesn't impact the bottom of the trolling motor here. And then also I have to consider making sure my Mega 360 is high enough to where my Mega Live 2 is not impacting that as well. So one thing I mentioned is, and it helped us install it straight, is that the Ultrax Quest series is more or less formatted for this bracket. 
So if you have a more round shaft trolling motor, you're gonna to take your inserts and slide them inside this trolling motor shaft mount, and that way it'll hold more stable when you're out in the water. So this is a foam mask that is included with your Megalive 2. And what this is used for is to help clean up your image. If you're getting double returns and stuff like that, you're gonna to wanna to put a foam mask on your transducer. I'll show you how to do that. You're gonna to wanna to do this if you're using forward mode a lot and casting out the fish a lot like I do. You're gonna to wanna to use one of the larger ones. So I'm gonna open this up real quick and kind of figure out which one kind of fits nicely against the top of Megalive. So you notice like, up here, this is the top part of the transducer. So I'm gonna go with this one because it matches nicely right there. And this just simply pulls apart. Make sure the transducer right here is clean so it adheres well. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna route the cable up the shaft. So we have these nice little grommets that I'm gonna put zip ties on. When you flip into landscape mode, it's gonna pull a little more cable. So you wanna make sure you have some slack there. And that's probably about enough right there. I'm just gonna go ahead and get this on, but I'm not gonna button it all the way down just in case I need to move it later, but just enough to kind of hold it there. Get this next one. And I like it all to be kind of on the top so that I can slide my trolling motor up and down on the mount and it's still just gonna, the cable's gonna fall nicely on top like this. Second tie. Again, enough I can wiggle it up and down if I need to. I like running it kind of over the top right here and connecting it to where my trolling motor cables are coming out. So I'll just kind of very, very loosely put a zip tie right here just to kind of hold them all together. So before I tighten these down finally, I'm gonna make sure I can rotate my transducer all around, throw it in the landscape, make sure I have the kind of cable clearance I want. And right now I'm good. I'm not getting the cables pinched at all or anything like that. I'll set it kind of where I want to. And over here you can see I want forward mode. So I'm gonna line this line up here with F for forward mode. You can see the landscape mode. So if I was in landscape mode, I would wanna rotate it like this, but I'm gonna be running it in forward mode. So I'll wind those up and I'm good to go. So I'm gonna zip tie these down and then move on to connect the wires. So one thing to know about the Megalive 2 mount as opposed to the Megalive 1 is that our rotation increments are seven and a half degrees now as opposed to 10 degrees for the Megalive 1. This gives you a little bit more granularity and you know, really fine tuning uh, what angle you wanna be shooting at. In particular, it's helpful for landscape mode because a lot of times you're really trying to skim the surface of the water or aim it just at the very right depth to see bluegill beds or fish schooling. So within this landscape mode, you have a few, you know, just real small increments that you can make to give you just a very precise picture. All right, so now we've routed our cables up our trolling motor shaft. We have two cables here. Uh, we have our ethernet cable that we're gonna plug in to another ethernet cable on our boat. The Megalife 2 comes with this ethernet cable that will route to uh, another compatible Humbird fish finder unit or preferably a switch. And then secondly, we have our power cable that will plug into the power cable that was given in the box. Uh, you can shorten this cable if necessary. And what you wanna do is you wanna plug this into a two amp fuse to protect the Megalive 2 unit from overloading on power. Fortunately, we already have these run. And so all I have to do is connect up the ethernet cable. This one is going to a switch and get that nice and snug. And then our power cable, tighten this as well. And now we're ready to test it out and make sure it's working. Megalive 2 transducers are compatible with all Humbird Explore series, Apex series, and Solix Gen 3 models. Just make sure the latest head unit software and Megalive 2 software is installed. So I've got my head unit booted up here and we're checking to make sure that Megalive 2 is plugged in and working. So immediately I see Megalive 2 pain come up. That immediately tells me that it knows there's a Megalive there. If I go into settings, network info, I'll see the Sonar Megalive, Megalive 2 version 2.11. It's connected, it's on the network. 
And if I go to the Mega Life 2 pane, I see it's connected, it's out of water, so it's not pinging and using up uh, energy and pings. Thank you for letting me talk to you guys about Mega Life 2. We're done with this installation, but for any more info you guys might need, we have a QR code on the box right here. For more information for Mega Life 2, give this QR code a scan.